Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Dan. And today, as you can see, I'm still continuing my Disney movie marathon, where I'll be talking about the movies, of course, TV shows, merchandising, I don't know, whatever the case may be. So of course, I'll be talking about Disney in any shape or form, if it's related to the company, some kind of method against in some kind of form, I'll talk about it, of course. So I'll be talking about this individual whom I spoke about before, and this is this guy. Yeah, he's a political commentator, he's, he's a conservative, and he seems to have a hate boner towards Disney. Just because there's a good chance to include gay characters, according to one podcast I'll be talking about, of course. This is a subject matter I spoke about before, and he's just at it again and again and again. And again and again, it's like a repeat kind of a thing here, is what I'm saying. And which is not surprising, but he really, really hates trans people. Like, holy hell, especially trans women. But here's the deal. You need to move fast because these phones are almost gone. So if your current phone is on life support, upgrade for free with Pure Talk. The new Moto G 5G phone boasts a two-day battery life, an exceptional quad pixel camera, and a whole lot more. Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So... Make the switch today. It's an easy choice to make. Just go to puretalk.com slash Walsh to get this exclusive offer and select the plan that's right for your family. Remember, Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make the switch today. That's puretalk.com slash Walsh to claim your free Moto G 5G phone with a qualifying plan. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Well, if you're on the right, then you know that the phrase, this is why we lose, has become something of a cliche these days. Anytime anyone on our side does anything we don't like, we're bound to declare, this is why we lose, as if that person is now a symbol for America's cultural decline. And in many cases, the this is why we lose charge can be off base, or at least overwrought and overstated. But not always. And so today, we begin with an actual case of this is why we lose. So over the past few days, there has been, seemingly out of nowhere, a full court press by some on the right to rehabilitate Bud Light. Sometimes I think I'm boy sort of, but I want to be a girl. Yeah. Would you love me if I'm a boy? Of course. I would love you no matter what. I always have, and I always will. Now, the, the little slight hint of skepticism that we get for NBC, from NBC in this report, you know, at least uh, showing us that there are uh, some doctors out there who will say that it's not a good idea to make permanent life-altering uh, changes to a child. Like that small, small hint of skepticism these days would not be allowed at all. But the most important part from this clip is we have the child, Joseph Romero, clearly expressing confusion and hesitation. In fact, he says that maybe he's a boy trapped in a girl's body instead of the other way around, even though he already has a boy's body. Um, or he says, yeah, he says it's a boy, a boy trapped in a girl's body is what he says now. This is how turned around and upside down this poor kid's self-perception has become, become thanks to Munchausen mommy and her enablers. Yes, there was multiple, many, many podcasts and videos in which he discussed basically the same thing. Like I just said a moment ago, it, it, it feels like a repeat, an exact repeat again and again and again. Just want to have me the same point where according to him that the LGBT plus community, primarily gay men and trans women, are somehow going to destroy family. Like they're trying to brainwash people and, and, and indoctrinate people those who don't know better like that like they're too naive to know what the difference between right and wrong and then of course the whole thing with gaslighting which of course seems to be like a popular thing a popular method that a lot of these christian conservatives or just christians in general and show that like to use just to make the individual who they're debating somehow question their mentality like their sanity somehow and just make them feel guilty in this case, like I was saying a moment ago, just the fact that there's a possibility that Disney may or may not include gay characters in their feature films, TV shows, or what have you. Okay, what's the problem? I don't know, but according to this guy, gay men and trans women are trying to destroy society somehow? I don't know when that was a thing, but okay, sure. All right, with that being said, enough with daily dallying, I guess. Yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. 
Again, I'll be referring to a podcast that he's done. But, all right, here we go. So, for the first time ever, Disney is going to feature an openly gay character in a movie. Um, the upcoming film titled The Jungle Cruise. Okay, so what? What's the plot exactly? So? If they want to include a gay character in said movie, by the way, I did watch that film, but so what? What's the plot exactly? I don't, I don't understand this really. But as long as there's a good story to it, that's what I really care about. But of course, according to him, it somehow means it's going to somehow translate to that it's bad storytelling somehow. Which will be based on a theme park ride. Presumably a theme park ride called the Jungle Cruise. I don't know. Just my deductive reasoning there. And, of course, all great films have been based on theme park rides. But this one is being billed as a turning point for the company. Uh, and it will be different from the, you might say, the more subtle homosexuality that has appeared in, in other Disney movies. Uh, for instance, the recent Beauty and the Beast remake. There was a great deal made of ahead of time before the movie came out while it was being marketed. We heard a lot about the gay elements in this movie, and that was supposed to be a turning point, this big deal. But in that case, it turns out that it was merely implied that a male character had an erotic obsession with another male character, which... Why does that matter anyway, if it was implied or not? What's the problem exactly? You have not pointed out the issue what the problem is. You're just jumping the gun here, acting as if there's some kind of conflict. Conflict. But again, what's the conflict? What? What's the trouble? If it's implied, or it's like really obvious, either way, so, this is capitalism. If they want to make any kind of story they want, they should be allowed to. They don't have to make one specific type of story. And then, this is, this is one of the most hypocritical things ever anyway, because you recognize as if that the LGBT plus community, along with the yeah. assistance of Disney, is trying to force your hand to to do stories that they want, but you would turn around, trying to force to them to do stories that you want them to tell. So, if anything, you don't want people to control you, but you sure as hell control others. So, but then of course you're a Christian, you would do that. So that's no surprise there. No, I'm not saying all Christians do this, but they are known for being acting very much in tune of being a, much, very much of a dictatorship, like this guy is. He's a moron. Christ. To me, at a minimum, seems like an extremely unnecessary plot point to put into a children's movie. That's just me. If I, if I were producing a children's movie, there isn't any point where I would stop and say, now, hold on a second, everybody. Maybe this male character should have an erotic obsession with that one. Maybe we should include that into because it's a children's movie, and I would just think, why? Why do we need erotic obsessions, really, of any kind, in a children's movie? But that's um again, that's just, I guess I don't know. Maybe I'm the crazy one. Oh yes, yes, you're absolutely your or. All right, because you don't want to be criticized for saying this stupid shit. Like that's your spraying out your mouth. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Uh, but I still don't know what the problem is. What? What? What's the problem exactly? You have not specified anything. Aside from what? Maybe there's an implied gay character somewhere in a movie that they made? Oh, okay. So what? Now, in this case, it, it will be different. It will be made, apparently, very clear, explicitly so, that... Um, the hugely effet character, and that's the quote. It's a quote from an article. The character is going to be hugely effet. Uh, it will be made clear that he is gay and that he is not interested in women. And if that is how the film goes, then now when I say it's going to be made explicitly Why? clear. Again, what's the problem? What's the issue exactly? You're just making shit up that just to make the Disney look bad. That's all you're doing. You just want to make Disney look bad for some reason. But what's the issue? You still not have re haven't answered anything exactly. You're just trying to jump the gun here and just imply that there's something sinister behind 
closed doors, whatever that something is. Again, what's the problem? What's the issue? You still haven't explained anything. You're just acting as if that gay people have a malicious intent to destroy society, to destroy everybody's family structure. They're trying to destroy the livelihood of Christians, which is not the case. If there's anybody doing anything remotely that like that, it's you Christians. That's what you're trying to do. So what are you talking about exactly? This makes no sense. This is so absurd when you think about it. Okay. Let's hope not too explicit, but but I, I don't really... Ah, oh, Jesus <laughs> goddamn Christ, we are this shit. I know what he's referring to. Again, like many of these individuals, he's assuming just because you would include a gay character, it's going to be automatically pornographic. Yeah, just be, even if the characters are all dressed up from head to toe, they're all dressed up in outfits, the only skin they'll be showing is maybe their hands, assuming they don't have any gloves. The only skin that they were showing is whatever skin that's on their head, and that's it. And just because a, one gay male kisses another gay male, that's instantaneously, off the bat, immediately porn. It's porn somehow. Like, what are you talking about, me? No one wants to show porn, at least no, no, no normal person would, show porn to family. Keep it to yourself. I honestly don't, I don't care if you do. If you want to watch it, go ahead. But you're not going to show it to your whole family. Like, what are you talking about? What? Where we're going with this. And if that is what happens in the film, if it is to any extent made clear, this is okay, this is an openly gay character, then it will be a turning point, I think, because hugely affect gay characters are quite common these days in film and television. Yeah, what's up? Um, so you're telling me that you didn't even see the movie anyway. Okay, you don't have to. I don't care if you do, though it would have actually helped your argument out much better if you actually did, to come to think about it, but yes, it would have helped you out if you actually saw the movie, which I know you don't want to do it because, oh no, icky, wiki, ew, gay people, you're just homophobic, that's it, you don't want to educate yourself in any kind of way, it would have helped you out in your argument. And it seems like they include them in every TV show and every movie that is not for kids. But that's not usually how it goes in Disney movies. It's not usually how it goes in mainstream family films. So this would represent Disney really crossing a threshold. In other words, it can't be family friendly if it's going to include gay characters. Like, what are you talking about here? What does that even mean? You still haven't explained yourself on any of this. So it just comes off, you just come and you're just making shit out of your own ass. Just to make up a problem. Again, what's the issue? You, so you can't have a family-friendly movie without gay characters? Why not? Oh, why am I asking? You're not going to answer anything, so whatever. Entering into a realm that would have seemed unthinkable and unbelievable even just 10 years ago. Now, as you might expect, <clears throat> there has been some blowback over this, uh, over this news but not from religious okay. conservatives. It's not, uh, it's what are you talking about? How is this so unthinkable exactly? Again, you just create a problem that's not even there in the first place. You're just acting as if the gay culture never existed before. The gay culture has been around even before you were even born. Matter of fact, it was around before even your dad was even born, before even your grandparents were, were even around. So how is it you acting as if this is a whole brand new experience? Like, what? Again, if this was 10 years ago or 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there would have been quite a bit of blowback from religious conservatives, but, but not now. The outrage in this case is coming from the left. It's liberals who are upset about this. Because we have been told it is, quote, problematic. Again, what the, f what the, hell, what the hell are you talking about? The gay culture has been around for more than 20 years, more than 30 years, more than 40 years, more than 50 years. It was around even when you were in your dad's nutsack. So why do you acting as if, why are you acting as though this is something brand spanking you that kind of literally have all the blue? So what are you talking about here, mate? What? You stupid or something? That 
Jack Whitehall, the, the actor hired to play the gay man, is not himself a gay man. And so that's, that's a problem. <clears throat> he has been hired to pretend to be something that he isn't, and, uh, and that we, we're not allowed to do that anymore. Now, bear this in mind. Jack Whitehall is apparently completely straight. He's not even a little bit gay. So that's... Okay, well, what's your point? I mean, yes, I'm one of those people who believe a gay actor or lesbian actress should play a gay man or, or a lesbian woman. Yes, I'll be one of those people. So, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea for a straight individual to play said character like that. I mean, you can always argue, ultimately, as long as it's a good story, who cares? But I'm going to use this as an example. One of the things that did irritate me about the film and Memoirs of a Gay Show is that they had a Japanese character being played by a Chinese. Give me a break here. And yes, I can use that as a comparison to a, a straight person playing a gay character. Now, it's not going to feel authentic like at all whatsoever. It just seems nonsensical to do, to do it that way when you think about it. It just seems weird. I don't know. Maybe just, maybe people would think I'm just being too uptight or whatever about this kind of a thing. I'm just trying to get. I'm just trying to explain my perspective. That's all I'm saying. So anyway, that just makes it all the worse. Because even if he were a little bit gay or partially gay, somewhat gay, that still would not be good enough. Because consider the fact that the actress Ruby Rose is facing criticism because of her casting as a lesbian Batwoman, there's a, there's a Batwoman series coming out on, I believe, the CW about a lesbian Batwoman. Now, Rose herself is a lesbian. What the hell are you talking about? Batwoman was always a lesbian, even in the comics. I mean, yeah, so there's been many different versions of said character, Cheryl, just like any other DC character. I know he's referring to the TV show, which, yes, was pretty bad, but again, he's claiming that the, the fact that you are inclusive, it's somehow... Like quality. So what are you talking about? But apparently she's not lesbian enough. I'm not making this up. That, that's actually what the, the left is saying, that she's getting criticism from liberals because her personal lesbianism is not of a kind and to a degree that would justify casting her as a lesbian bad woman. That's, I, I mean, this is, this is just crazy. Oh, Jesus Christ. So we're doing this again. So he, yes, he's assuming that just because you're going to include a lesbian character in a comic book thing, it somehow means your show will plummet. You will lose money and whatnot. That doesn't make any sense. How does that even work exactly? People like this, specifically religious people like this, I tend to get on my nerves. And let me provide some context here because this is a topic I've mentioned multiple times already by this point. Is that fear in the foreigner. The Christian nationalists, a lot of the Catholics, and of course many of the Christian conservatives seem to have a fear of the foreigner. Whether they're Chinese, Japanese, Korean, or whatever, just just the fact that they're from that part of the world, they seem to be thinking that they're up to something. So one of these religious individuals in the, in the following clip I'm about, put, about to show is that they should say he's definitely doubling down on his claim that an earthquake, yeah, referring to Japan, will soon bring ruin to the West Coast, which he wrote in a email to an individual, I guess he trusts, I suppose, pretty much saying that the Ameri America's policy towards places like er Ariel, uh, Israel is responsible for natural disasters that have shocked uh, our country, a.k.a. America. He has already said that certain people... Well, he warned people to get out of um, California because America has fallen into the ultimate depravity that a country will fall into, according to him, and said that the recent earthquake in Japan will lead to demonic processions and a Nazi takeover of the United States. Yes, again, making reference to World War II, some kind of matter here, I guess. Do some reflection to that kind of a thing. And yes, he had to point out many of the negative things that had, had occurred for the last few years, but according to the claim anyway, that it, like it or not, and many don't like it, what he has to say 
that people have to keep track of this kind of abominations or quite few have listened and, and believed and be, have to be prepared and be proper and that he knows that the the, pe the actual people who are prepared for this kind of a thing and uh, will actually listen to the gospel, of course, and therefore his goal should be to warn that the final uh, destruction does not have to happen. Everything will be settled and might be right, made right on Judgment Day, which is what he's trying to say, because he wants to revolve the problem to live for, I guess, that the West Coast is about to be shaking like what ha has never had been shaking before. He's encouraging people, pretty much everyone that he knows, to pray for more time, that we don't have much time. Apparently, others have seen similar things around the world, I guess, like the Philippine River, whatever that means, and had made some kind of link with the U.S. puts serious pressure on Israel to divide so in place, of course, I still don't know what any of this has to do with Japan, by the way, but whatever. In other words, he's trying to call the Japanese the devil. Yeah, with, the, with their satanic language. Yes, people like him will claim that speaking their language as works of Satan. The actual Japanese language, by the way. The devil language. Apparently, according to this individual, whom I'm about to show in a moment, by the way, there are parallels between things they have do, they have done to Israel and natural disasters that have shook our country. Again, referring to America, that is not a coincidence, according to this guy. Uh, okay, this is a complete lie, but okay. Anyway, so uh, he's bringing these kinds of things up because after the Japanese earthquake, did hit had created some kind of controversy, a list of controversies in his life. Again, whatever that means, I have no idea. He, he claims I'm not, again, referring to the one individual I'm about to bring up, by the way. He doesn't like the controversy. Again, whatever that means, I have no idea. Anyway, yeah, to, uh, he, he he realized that, that much can be accomplished in these troubled times without it. Again, what does that mean? I have no idea. Though he does not claim that to handle or even accurate uh, any word perfectly, Again, I don't know what he's referring to exactly. So anyway, so he wants to spend a lot of time second guessing, second guessing him, himself. So don't assume, but he's already assuming anyway. So again, what is he referring to exactly? So in the individual I'm about to show, he's just been utterly racist when you think about it, which he is come to think about it. Again, I was showing the, I was showing the clip in just, in just a sec. But anyway, in this case, the more controversy in that... You know, his statements is claiming up story about the word will get the word out better in a true word, according to him, and the controversy is causing more people to talk about it. So in other words, he's intentionally trying to be controversial in order to he have a to, to bring attention to it and to themselves so that the West, the government can be more aware of what they're trying to do. Again, I don't know what that means to make perhaps some sort of preparations. Uh, what are we talking about exactly? So, as far as I'm concerned, this is just him trying to draw attention to himself. And he admitted that he wants to have attention for himself. Because, of course, just have some of the West Coast have started to hear for themselves and not listen to the naysayers, even if some of the most uh, valid doubters we have, we have their judgment, and he is forever thankful, of course. Yeah, yeah whatever. He's a he's a moron. Again, I, the person I'm referring to, I was just showing him just a moment. But anyway, every day he, this begins to unfold, and our West Coast will be the worst day of his life. When this evil thing, whatever that evil thing comes, of course, that... Somebody will be unlikely to get credit for accurate the prophecies. So according to him, this guy, this prophecy thing is going to happen, whatever this prophecy is. But without further ado, and yes, he has something to do with what happened with World War II, with the Nazis and whatnot. Somehow that's going to be used to attack America. 
Like, what, what are you talking about? Like, the Japanese have some kind of revenge kind of a thing for what occurred in War II. I, was, I don't know what he's talking about, but... Are you pissed off that they almost won? But anyway, here you go, without further ado. So you can see the parts I'm talking about. It's the dude with the white hair. Like, mostly just white hair. But anyway. What we have to have now are people who understand the difference between right and wrong and are willing to stand for that truth mm -hmm. in an increasingly hostile mm -hmm. society. The point is people think politics is dirty. Mm -hmm. that this is dirty business. As Christians, we should not dirty our hands to this. Let me tell you why it's dirty. Because Christians aren't in it. Mm -hmm. right. You know, when, when we, if we want righteous government, if we want good government, we got to put good people in it. And right. that's what we need today. We need men who rightly discern the times and can d rightly divide the word of God and provide solutions to the problems that America is facing. When Xerxes said to Leonid Leonidas with his 300 men there and Xerxes with his massive army said to him, lay down your weapons. Leonidas sent the message back and said, Molan Lebe, come and take them. Hmm. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm at the point now where I'm saying Molan Lebe mm -hmm. to those in Washington, to those in the special interest groups that want to take my liberties, that want to rob my grandchildren of the opportunity to live in the kind of America that I grew up in, I'm at the point where I'm saying Molan Lebe because I will not be silent. I will not sit on the pews confident in my salvation. I know I'm going to heaven. I know that I've been redeemed of my sins, but that's not enough. God has given us some very specific commands in terms of what we are supposed to do as this kind of thing happens to the whole world, but especially in our country. Mm -hmm. And it is a time for the Christians, Christian leaders, spiritual people to get involved in what's happening in this country. You know, we've got far more than enough people. If we will take our stand and resolve, we will not retreat. That we will take our stand now. We're not going back any further, and we're going to recover all that was lost. We've got more than enough people to do it. We need to bind together into a fellowship of those who are willing to do this. We're starting, we're part of starting something of a fellowship. It's called 300. You'll hear more about it. We're not going to retreat any further. We're going to take a stand. This country had solid biblical and moral foundations, a Judeo-Christian heritage that is being robbed from us, being robbed from our children, from future generations. We're saying no more. So yeah, the older gentleman, older looking gentleman and the other guys were just talking about the fact that they have to be thankful for that so many great churches, the works of God, are on the West Coast because they assume that personality has something to do with with America. But like I said multiple times before, this is not a Christian nation like whatsoever. It's, it's not. It really isn't. And hopefully, according to them, that all of the individuals are good people who will be spared, like what happened to the people in the Bible. And they know that great churches and great saints will be needed like there never was before. So, mind you, that clip I showed you was, was released like years ago. So, this great catastrophe never happened. Anyway, they would cons have considered that this may be why that God, is, that indiv some individuals may not be hearing the word of God. God does not want all of us to leave. Like, what are you talking about here exactly? They must be praying for now for the strength and perfection, uh, the protection of God's people on the west coast so that they will be they might the almighty be used by him and whatnot so and that many will be saved for every single one who is lost in the pending disaster but what pending disaster are you talking about i have no idea what he specifically is referring to exactly him and and the other people so it just goes into, again, in other conversation I had before with this kind of thing. The fear of being replaced. That, that's it, really. So apparently this, this is, the West Coast is doomed. Of course, like you were, and when it comes to having the army, of course, that's kind of what he's referring to, that Christians must all team up like the like the empire. 
the Roman Empire, so to speak, because apparently the whole earthquake thing I was referring to a moment ago, because apparently, according to these individuals, again, I'm just trying to provide more context here so you can understand what I'm saying here, that the Japan Japanese earthquake, just the fact that happened, will somehow unleash this demonic Nazism onto America, because... Like, like, like the same kind of wicked energy that with the bomb, it was the same thing as the Nazism. Like some, some kind of wicked spirit was controlling people somehow. And there's some kind of connection here. I, I don't get it. And it, it does has something to do with the family research console. One of the individuals is Tony, by the way, had teamed up with a few other individuals, like you just saw in the, um, in the clip, because Christians must team up, must have an army. That's going to rise up to save America from the forces of evil that's hell bent on its destruction. Again, whatever that means, I have no idea. So, of course, there is this supposed important significance of the earthquake, of that specific earthquake that happened in that year, I guess, just right before they did that video. Whereas the other half of individuals, like the proclaimed prophets in the movement in some kind of movement have said that the tragedy was god's effort to shake the nations referring to japan free of its pagan religion because apparently because apparently the japanese is practicing paganism like what uh since when of course i want to pin the point like things are evil apparently and whatnot so i just i just don't get it i don't get any of this really, like, whatsoever. It just seems odd that this kind of thing is needed. Like, what are you talking about? I, I, uh, I want to show another clip real quick, real quick, of course, in just a moment. And just also why I'm trying to say some things here before I get to Matt Wash again. Because, of course, this is, what I'm about to show is pretty much an extension of what I showed you a moment ago. Because he wants people... Uh, the, the guy, the older gentleman I was referring to, is named Rick, by the way. Uh, what does it mean on Rick's? I mean, seriously. But anyway, point being, he's, uh, he's trying to rally people up in this Prince conference in order to make people get be warned, be alert of this kind of a thing, because the people must rise up to fight against the, the enemy. Who are the enemy? As I guess in this case, it's the Japanese, apparently. But like I said, I will I'll show the Clip in just a moment, you folks. I saw the clip in just a moment, so you can you can hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. So there you go. Anyway, without further ado, I'll, I'll just let the this asset say it. The same demonic, evil principalities that had taken over Germany were going to attempt to take over the United States. He wanted to understand how what opened this gate of hell into Germany so it wouldn't have to happen here. Now, myself and Bob Jones and, and Paul Kane and a number of other people had all gotten that same thing from the Lord, that we really needed to understand what happened in Nazi Germany because the very same demonic principalities... Yes, he's actually assuming that the Japanese people have been demonic Oh, this is the same demonic energy that controlled the Nazis. Which I found rather odd, considering the fact that Hitler believed in the same kind of religion, at least a version of it anyway. In this case, it's the same thing that he, Rick Orville, believes in. What? We're going to seek inroads into America. He's referring to the free market. So the Japanese are going to infiltrate the, like the stores with the merchandise and whatever and destroy the free market somehow. What? So you're telling me that the Japanese would intentionally do this because they have a hatred towards the happy, go lucky, wholesome Christian family? Like, why would they do this anyway? You, what, you, you haven't explained anything. Their purpose was to do something as bad or worse here than was done there, but on a much larger scale. And I feel like we're going to face the same strongholds here. I think it's all unfolding right now. The real beginning of some things would start with a major earthquake in Japan. 
a uh, lot of other details, even some of the things. Notice how he's being fairly vague about these supposed details. And yes, there are J Japanese who are really not being trustworthy of Christians like this. And it's for good reason. And I can't really blame them, if, if you want to be honest here. Part of that revelation, too, was a atomic mushroom cloud. I don't know what's going on with those reactors over there. But, uh, you know, things are unfolding right now. They really are. The uh, Some other prophetic voices that I think have, have a good track record, even in the last year or so, have started saying that something was going to happen in Japan. Again, being incredibly vague. What is that something? What is that something you're referring to? What? That would call, cause them to call in their bonds. Okay. Yeah, in other words, when Japan asked for money, asked for assistance from America, and then that's where they would strike, and he's also what? claiming that People, the non-believers, are forcing people like him to fight. You're making me do this. You, you, you forced me to do this. How could you? So, if anything, Japan has some kind of strategy to attack people like him because reasons, I guess. Their American debt, the debt, you know, they had purchased so much of American uh, debt, they were going to need it for rebuilding Japan. And that would cause the collapse here. One nation asking another nation for assistance in itself, that's not the bad thing. But he's acting as, he's assuming that there's some sort of conspiracy going on here. You know, things are happening right now. We need to understand, be prepared for. We also need to get, we don't have to fall to the evil that is going to try to use these things. This can be turned into good. But we need to under, you, we have to understand the devil's schemes. And I tell you, the next two years are going to be the most critical, I think. Gaslighting, 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 gaslighting. You need to prepare. You need to listen. Oh, Christ. This sounds awfully familiar. Oh, yeah. Remember we were talking about the one individual from way earlier? Yeah, this guy, this asshat. Yeah, we're still on this because gay and Disney and trans people and yada, yada, yada. So let's get on with it, I guess. And you know what? I won't even get into the blatant double standards here. I won't focus especially on that. That's a different topic. But there is obviously a huge double standard when you whine about a straight guy being cast as a gay character or even a mostly gay woman being cast as a completely gay character. When you whine about that, yet, yet at the same time you celebrate when women are cast in traditionally male roles or when uh, a black person is cast... Well, look at yourself in the mirror, bud. If there's anybody that has a double standard, it's you. You preach open minds of love, except for those who you don't like. In a traditionally white role, yeah, you know, or even when a gay actor is cast in a straight role. And I think it stands to reason that there have been dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands of straight characters portrayed by gay actors in Hollywood over you know, the course of Hollywood's history. But we're not allowed to complain about that. You can never complain about that. So the left, any time you've got, they, they do this stupid stunt where they, uh, they take a... Kind of a gotcha you know, Yeah, you shouldn't. So he's trying to play off like, oh, it's a gotcha mode. This is a gotcha mode. What are you talking about here, mate? Leave him alone. They're not bothering you. Male character. And they say, we're going to do this movie again, but with women, you know. Um, anytime they do that, if, if any man breathes even a word of criticism or even rolls their eyes at it, the left will pounce on them and say, oh, you sexist, you just hate women, look at you. Um, when usually, by the way, usually when, when people complain, like if they're doing a, a female Ghostbusters type of thing, the complaint there isn't that uh, <laughs> there's... You realize you can separate these social justice warriors, at least in today's definition, away from the gay people. You realize that, right? He, again, he's trying to be like, I got you. That's all he's trying to do. It's a got you. Can't he be complaining about the liberals being a bunch of snowflakes when he's doing that? He says that the Democrats are being a bunch of uh, crybabies 
when in reality that's him. He's playing he's playing himself right there. In other words, what he's trying to get at like this show, for example, Santa E is often criticized for being one of the absolute worst comedies of our time. And rightfully so. And the point here is, is that I'm trying to use this as an example to give his point of view here. This show is trying to be inclusive just for its own sake. Is it badly written? Yes, of course, it's horrible. And of course, this is used as a way to take stabs at white people, how white the white man is the absolute menace to society, which of course is a lie. That's not the case. And how what Matt what is trying to get at, what Matt Wash is trying to get at, if you're trying to be inclusive, you're just as horrible and lackluster as this show is. But that's a complete lie. I mean, yes, the show is bad. Yes, it is. But he's still lying because he's not looking at execution. He's not looking at the quality of said storytelling. I mean, you could make it inclusive and have good quality. This show right here, this mini series, I guess you can call it, tried and failed to do that. But Matt, Matt Watcher here fails to see that you could be inclusive and have good writing. But if you want to see a, a game or a story or whatever that does it correctly, Dragon Age Inquisition. What Santa Inc. fails in, this game succeeds in. Being inclusive, but have a good story, three dimensional characters, suspenseful moments, great gameplay, great music, pretty much great at everything. And even if there's some flaws in the game itself, but there's more, there's more good than bad. So, it's a fantastic game. I really like the storytelling and whatnot. And it has the characters being in various backstories. And like I said, it's done correctly. If you want to have diversity, do it correctly. But Matt Walsh right here does not want to include when it does it right. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are stories that is inclusive that does it badly, yes. But Matt Walsh right here just wants to only focus it when, they, when it is done wrong. And it's done wrong multiple times, yes. But it's also done well multiple times as well. But you don't want to give it credit when credit's due. Obviously not. Like for example, like when they remade The Little Mermaid and did like Rice Swap, which, yes, I will agree, it's lazy writing, because th that character has already been established. It's, like, it's no different than getting a coloring book and just cut the character a different color. But, of course, Matt Watts would just focus on that when it's done wrong, just to prove his point, which, of course, is very manipulative on his part. Or the remake for Cinderella, this one with Brandy, which is Teddy considers race swapping. I'm just being the same thing over and over again here. Is that he just wants to look at when it's done poorly, just to make it as if that have it been inclusive is bad. But that's kind of odd when you think about it, because I've seen multiple different stories of robbing straight people, and they're bad. Uh, I've reviewed more bad movies with straight couples than I've reviewed bad movies with inclusiveness. So, again, he's just picking and choosing and on what he wants to talk about because it will contradict what his own narrative in which he was trying to set up here. Yeah, there's plenty, and I mean plenty of bad movies I've reviewed over the years that has straight people in it. And that's not a stab towards straight people, of course. It just happens to be bad. This is bad execution for a various reason. Their sexual orientation or their country of origin or what have you or gender identity has nothing to do with that. Like, at all. Oh boy, just... I mean, just... Okay, he's clearly just picking and choosing like we were saying a moment ago. And the one thing I want to bring up real quick, the last subject I want to bring up about is, of course, he was talking about Disney's Beauty and the Beast here. We're supposed to hate Gaston from the beginning. Referring to the original Beauty and the Beast, by the way, the one from the early 90s. Yes, he thinks that Gaston is the hero of the show, and the Beast is the bad guy. Because why? He's manly and in good shape? Yeah, he's claiming that this movie is anti-man just because Gaston is attractive to him? What? That's not what's going on at all. He eats a lot of eggs? Is that... Now, someone was not paying attention to the, to the more of the story. It's just that Gaston was, was trying to force Belle to marry him, and he couldn't take no for an answer. Therefore, Gaston was getting really pissed off and trying to force himself onto her even further. And therefore, this causes her to push back even more. I mean, okay, in Belle's defense, that's not, that seems like a reasonable response. 
we're in some reaction when you think about it, but okay. At his crime? What has he done wrong? It's not right for a woman to read. Soon she starts getting ideas and thinking. They never explain it. And the anti-Gaston propaganda is laid on thick from the very beginning, but even in spite of that, it's clear who the real protagonist is. We see Gaston early in the film. What a pleasant surprise. So you're telling me that you're perfectly okay with people forcing themselves onto others. And if they reject that those advances through anti-man? What? Right? He's dressed to the nines. He visits Belle to propose marriage. Say you'll marry me. And he's obviously an advocate of traditional marriage and the nuclear family. He even says that. He makes a pitch for the nuclear family, traditional marriage to Belle. He's explaining. We'll have six or seven. Dogs? No, Belle. Strapping boys like me. You know, he wants to have children. He wants to have a family. It's a very lovely thing. Belle turns him down and pushes him into a mud pit. Total humiliation. Wait, what? Who's embarrassing who exactly? Who's doing that? Who's doing what? What are you talking about? And yet by the end, Gaston is still willing to risk his life to rescue this woman, this woman who humiliated him from the clutches of a beast. And how did Beauty end up in that situation? Yeah, she initially went to the beast castle to save her dad or whatever, I think. How did you find me? But she, she had many opportunities to escape after that point. Like, she could have just walked out. I mean, she was in, in the prison cell, and then she's invited to dinner. And from that point on, she doesn't go back to the prison cell. So... Well, yes, Gaston was still trying to... Yeah, sacrifice his own life, sure, like you said. But it's for, it's for selfish intent. <sighs> Christ. Okay, the beast was in his way. The beast was getting in the way of what he wanted. The beast was viewed as a threat to the possible relationship that he could have he, he thought he could have had but i do not see this gaston was a narcissist and he's a hero to you and if anything the beast he's he's socially awkward the beast himself is socially awkward i mean granted so it's gaston because he can't read people with shit and but yes the beast is guilty of this too to some extent anyway i mean i'm not saying he's as bad as gaston i'm not saying that i'm just saying that both of these characters have that in common. Both characters are socially awkward in, in different extents, sure. But still, though, that's there. Oh, boy. Hey, do not, you, you're a terrible movie viewer here. She could have left anytime, anytime. But she stays because she ends up falling in love with a non-human creature who looks kind of like an evil water buffalo. Keep something in mind. Belle didn't know that the beast was really a human prince. She had no idea about that. Okay, that's true. Look up on the, that's, that you can go back and watch the movie. That's ne she never is aware of that fact. That was just luck of the draw. So as far as she knew, she was entering into a romantic relationship with a member of, a, of another species. Yeah, that's a simple fact. So you're trying to inform me that a woman shouldn't reject a man's advances? Is that what you're saying? I'm confused here. Now, of course, poor Gaston, he didn't know about any of this. He didn't know that the beast was really a prince. He didn't know that the woman of his dreams had fallen in love with a giant mutant mountain goat. All he knew from his perspective was that Beauty had been imprisoned by a monster. Her own dad told Gaston that. Who's got Bell locked in a dungeon? A beast! A horrible, monstrous beast! And so he rallies the troops. He marches off to fight for her and save her. This is the villain of the story? So you're telling me that Gaston is the victim of feminism or something? Is that what he's saying? I I'm just severely confused by all this. This is, what this is what I'm trying to get at here. What's your point? I mean, I know he's trying to get that Gaston. Poor him. Poor Gaston. He's the victim of all this because his events keep getting rejected. But what's your basis on this exactly? You still haven't explained anything, really. The man who ultimately gave his very life for the woman he loved? And the monster who kidnapped a young woman is supposed to be the one we're rooting for? That's just wrong. And I won't stand for it. So, thank you for spending 10 minutes watching this piece of content. It was obviously very important and uh, well worth your time and mine. Oh, just drink a bucket of piss for all I care. Make sure it's fresh too.
So yeah, let me just wrap this up. This video is very long, of course. I realize that. It's just that I just had to discuss various things here because these individuals just make no sense, like whatsoever. I'm just getting really confused here as to what's the point exactly. And yes, I know their ultimate goal, people like Matt Wash over here, is just to trash talk Disney just because it's Disney. That's it. But what's his basis here, really? Something about gay people, something about feminism, something about trans individuals, primarily trans women. I do find kind of hilarious in a really moronic way in the sense that these individuals don't really talk about trans men. Yes, trans men exist. What do you know? So we're not going to pay attention to them at all, really? What's going on here exactly? I don't, I don't understand this. I mean, at the end of the day, he's just been a bigot, really. That is obvious. That much weather is pretty obvious. Now, the other religious individuals I brought up earlier as well. So anyway, I guess that'll be it, folks. So I do appreciate anybody for watching this lengthy video where I just discuss Disney, of course. And I guess more specifically, the response to Disney is what I'm talking about. Maybe not Disney itself per se, but more that their response to it, to be more exact. I know this felt like it's all over the place. But that's because it is, really. At least to some extent, anyway. And, alright, that'll be it. So, again, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm just done here. I'm just going to go and just find something else to do. I do appreciate anybody for watching, of course. So, as always, thanks for watching, and take care. Until next time, see ya. Oh, yeah. Later. I'll leave you with this one last thing, is that I don't know how people like Matt Wash would assume that the liberals or the Democrats would act like a bunch of dictators when something like this appears. The other day, Donald Trump said on his first day, he's going to be a dictator for a day. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like that. Would you rather have Donald Trump as a dictator for four years or re-elect Joe Biden for four years? I would rather have Donald Trump. I'd like to see the repeal of the Roosevelt Law so that he can be a president for a lot more than four years. But we, this country, needs a dictator. I hate to say that, but it's the truth. With the whole Trump thing I just showed you, that kind of digs what Matt Wash said and what the one Rick individual I just mentioned earlier as well. Oh, is the Japanese turning into dictatorship? Okay, sure. And then this guy. Hopefully, admit for a dictatorship as well. So, out from the horse's mouth. They're saying they're coming after your your gay marriage next. They're coming after your birth control after that and everything else. Well, you know what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So the reason why the West is great is because Western civilization's underpinning is Christianity. That is straight up psychotic, man. I'm sorry. I don't even know what to do with that. That's so insane. Uh, the use of contraception is against uh, natural moral law. Yes. Uh, is destructive, a doorway to abortion, blah, yes. blah, and all that and everything else. Contraception's a doorway to abortion? What? Anyway, the point is... The far right is coming after contraception. If you think they're not, then you're wrong. They have been for a while. They've been talking about this. Why not use contraception? People do. But the right is trying to get rid of contraception, too, for the record. And also, contraception is not foolproof. does not work 100% of the time. There's no perfect system. Even if you use two forms of birth control, which everybody should be doing, it's not foolproof. And that's how a lot of these Christians are. Let me oppress you. Let me oppress you. Let me oppress you. But then if you disagree with them, oh, you're praising them. What? Then people like Matt Walsh would claim that that's what the liberals and Democrats are doing. So, what the hell? And again, this is not a Christian nation either. And it shouldn't be. And of course, it's still a thing when it comes to trans people wanting to use the bathroom. Why is this still a thing? I have no idea. And even in this, in this day and age, we're still talking about these individuals so in a bad light i don't i don't understand they just want to go they just want to piss and shit like everyone else so what's the crime exactly i don't know so now who's the person who oh yeah that's you christians doing that to everyone else why do you hate trans people so much i don't get it why do you hate gay people so much i don't understand all right whatever that's it okay i, I did say i was gonna cut this off already so thanks for watching like i just said a moment i appreciate the view and whatnot Ugh, these people, they're, they're just frustrating. Oh, God. I'm going to Wendy's. Yeah. I'm just going out of here. Unless, I'm, unless I offended somebody by saying that. Whatever. What a piss off.